Hi, it's Michael from MichaelAngeloCaruso.com and the Present Like a Pro Facebook group. If you like these kinds of videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you'll be notified when new videos are posted. I'm going to give you four strategies that you can use to uh, buff up and beef up your presentations. These are pre-approved bits, if you will. I've been using them for years. The benefit of pre-approved bits is there it's like little bits of information spinning on your hard drive all the time they're always accessible to you and you just pop them out whenever you need them during a live presentation so think of it as like this little storage cache of of um, uh, things that you can do during your presentation to keep the audience engaged and keep them interested uh, they become pre-approved over time because you are always cultivating and curating your content and so you start to understand what works and what doesn't work. So I have four bits, many more than four, but I'm going to share four with you today that I keep in the back of my mind or in my back pocket, and I just pull them out whenever I need them. So the first one is just a general motivation piece. Most of my talks these days, because I teach presentation skills, because I do a lot of keynotes that have a motivational flair to them, is that, uh, that I'm always sending the message, that you can do this we can do this, right? And so anytime I want to in my presentation, I can say, we can do this, right? So I can tell a success story and then I can link it back to the audience. We can do this. Or I tell a, a story about somebody that did something great and I say, and you can do the very same thing. And so this, this constant like surge of vitamins coming to the audience just because I do a callback to this motivational, we can do this, you can do this bit. Okay, so that's the first one. The second bit involves humor. Now, all humor, a lot of humor, is packaged in groups of three, and the third one's always the funniest. So I've been using this little bit for years. It's worked in 49 of the 50 states, and it goes like this. I'll be talking to the audience, usually at the beginning. This is when I really need to do a lot of things very quickly, like getting the audience to know, like, and trust me, and I can use humor to get this done. So I often ask the audience, whether it's 40 or 400, <laughs> I always, uh, fall into this bid it seems to work very very well and so I asked three questions and the first question is what uh, it's so good to see so many people here today how many of you are good-looking people please raise your hand so just the question itself gets people engaged and smiling they don't know where this is going but it sounds mildly interesting and a bunch of people will raise their hand it's never everyone in the room for various reasons right and so I've asked how many of you are good-looking please raise your hand and then I dwell on the fact that not everyone has raised his or her hand. Funny. Gets funnier on the second question. Great, thank you very much. How many of you are smart people? Please raise your hand. So now I'm building what the French call a motif, M-O-T-I-F, right? It's a pattern. They're even more engaged with the second question because now it's really interesting. Where is he going with this? Also, I dwell on the fact that not everybody raises the hand to answer the question, how many of you are uh, smart? And so the third question, again, is the funniest, and the third question is, of course, the punchline. How many of you are here today, right? And, and then again, I just, I drill on that down again, that isn't it funny, not everybody is even answering this question in the affirmative. It hits a, a, an extra base hit, as they say in baseball, every time I do it. And it's a bit, a prepackaged bit that I can pull out of my back pocket anytime I need it, usually at the beginning of a talk. So. Uh, the third technique I want to show you is uh, how to deal with dead air and that's a simple technique called the stall and the stall works on a very simple principle that nature abhors a vacuum my dad taught me this when I was six <laughs> I didn't know what it meant until I was 26 but what he meant was that if you're the speaker and you stop talking you create this vacuum right and this vacuum is called dead air and people are obligated somehow they become like morally obligated to fill the dead air especially if you ask a question so I'll ask a question in my talk what do you think about this and then I stop talking now it doesn't work if I ask what do you think about this and then keep talking I must stop talking so it's a two-step procedure what do you all think about this and I create the vacuum, this vacuum of dead air. Sometimes I'll take a drink of water, sometimes I'll uh, pretend to be, uh, or I will fish a, a handkerchief out of my pocket, 
right? There's all kinds of stall techniques that I can use, but the point is by creating the dead air vacuum, it compels people in the audience to engage and talk, and that's a beautiful thing. That breaks down what the, they call in uh, comedy the fourth wall, and then the people become part of the presentation, willingly. It's a beautiful thing. And so that's the third technique. So just to review before we do the fourth, uh, the motivation technique is you can do this, we can do this. The humor technique happens in threes and it's asking this series of three questions. The third one's always the funniest. The third technique is a way to create a vacuum on purpose that creates dead air, compelling audience members to then participate in the program. And the fourth technique I wanna share with you today is very simple, it's called the big finish. And at the big finish of a presentation, I would raise my voice a little bit, my gestures would become a little bit broader, almost as if I was on a theater stage. And of course, I would be picking up my WPM or my words per minute to uh, encourage everyone to take action. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're interested in more tips on how you can sharpen your presentations. And also visit michaelangelocaruso.com. Thank you.